Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, is Jay Cutler the right fit for the Dolphins? That's why Skip believes it's time for LeBron James to grow up. And what's it going to take for an NFL team to give Colin Kaepernick a chance? Skip, Shannon, let's debate. Let's start with huge news from Miami. Multiple reports say Jay Cutler has agreed to a one-year, $10 million deal with the Dolphins. This move comes after reports that Ryan Tannehill will need season-ending knee surgery. Cutler left football for the Fox broadcast booth back in May, but he'll be reunited with Dolphins head coach Adam Gase, who was Cutler's offensive coordinator in Chicago in 2015. The Miami Herald reports the Dolphins were also interested in Colin Kaepernick, Tim Tebow, and Kyle Orton. Shannon, is this a good move or a bad move by the Dolphins? It's a bad move. It's embarrassing, quite frankly. And I, and I, I get the Dolphins, they were in a bind. Uh, Tannehill goes down with the uh, the knee injury. The severity, it seems to be as more news trickles out, there's a great chance that he's probably going to be done for the entire season. So I get it. But Jay Cutler signed with us, signed with the, the Fox. He was going to do the broadcast. This is what Jay Cutler said on May 5th, Skip, mm -hmm. a little over three months ago. He said, I don't know if retirement is the right word. I don't feel that anyone ever really retires from the NFL. You're either forced to leave or you lose the desire to do what's required to keep going. I'm between those two situations. So I'm just trying to figure, did Jay Cutler call all 32 teams and say, if somebody goes down, I'm willing to come out of retirement? Probably not. Here's a guy, Skip. He says, I don't know if, I'm, if I want to put in what's required now, Colin Kaepernick needs to tell people he wants to play quarterback in the National Football League. I wonder if Jay Cutler called the Miami Dolphins and says, I want to play. And then this, this narrative about Cap says, okay, well, he wants too much money. It's amazing how the Miami Dolphins found $10 million for a guy, a retired guy, not a guy mm -hmm. that last threw a pass in January, a retired guy. Yep. No, no we, don't, we, don't, we don't want you. Uh, what about this thing, Skip? You know, well, you know what? He, Callen, he, he doesn't want to be a backup. He wants to start. You paying Jay Cutler $10 million to be a backup, or you bringing him in to start? Definitely to start. But here's what's the most egregious part of it, Skip. They lumped Colin Kaepernick, a guy that last threw a pass in January of 2017. They said they were also interested in Tim Tebow. The last time Tim Tebow threw a pass was December 17th, 2012. Mm-hmm. Over four years. That, that's shameful in and of itself, but go ahead. Skip, what did he tell you when you ask him if there's a chance somebody gets down? He says, that chapter of my life is closed. He told you he was done with football. Mm -hmm. And he felt like he had been blackballed for reasons other than his ability to play football, but just keep going. Kyle Lorton, mm -hmm. last played in 2015. 2014, excuse me. Kyle Lorton said he was done. Mm -hmm. Kyle Lorton said he was retiring from the National Football League. So he told you he wasn't, mm -hmm. but somehow what? You reached out, mm -hmm. kicked the tires, and see if he might be a little interested. All the things that you said Colin Cap should be doing, teams are going above and beyond to do with other guys. So basically what they're telling you, Colin Kaepernick, is we need a quarterback, just not you. Skip, everybody keeps talking about O.J. Cutler. And I want to stop this narrative right here, and I'm going to stop it right now, and don't ever, I don't want to hear it again. Man, he's so talented. Jay Cutler has as much arm talent, and oh, he still can run. The, he's 34 years of age. He is what he is. He's a turnover, injury-prone, underachieving quarterback. In 11 years, he's going to the playoff one time. That's about 9%, a little over 9%, Skip. Mm -hmm. He's won one playoff game. Oh, he had his best season with Adam Gaze. The Chicago Bears with 23 in scoring and 23 in passing. Mm -hmm. and, the te uh, and the great season, they were 6-10. and 10. Jay Cutler started 15 games, so they were 6-9 and nine with him. They lost the last game. Mm -hmm. So how good were they, Skip? So how good is he? Now, well, you know, but Jay knows the offense and Colin Kaepernick really doesn't fit. Skip, in 2011, when the Broncos went on that magical run, can you tell, to the, can you tell the people at home, who's the quarterback coach? Adam Gase. Oh, my goodness. You mean to tell me Adam Gase worked with a guy 
that ran better than he threw the ball, but he could throw the, throw the ball somewhat from the pocket? Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me Adam Gase actually... He, he wasn't the coordinator, but he worked you, with him. He's the quarterback's coach. Quarterback coach yeah. mm -hmm. who worked with the quarterback on a mm -hmm. daily basis, mm -hmm. who watched film with the quarterback on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Hence why he was interested in just checking out Tim Tebow this time. You're going to well. check out a guy mm -hmm. that last threw a ball on December 17th, 2012. Mm -hmm. What about the guy that last threw a ball in January of 2017? That's what's so embarrassing about it, Skip. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, Skip, I don't even know what to say. And I've said it from day, from day one. This was never, ever about Callen, Colin Kaepernick's ability to play in the National Football League. We knew, even you knew it was something. And the thing about it, the Skip, that I love most about you, you weren't afraid to say it. Everybody else always says his ability. It has nothing to do with the protest. Oh, if he could play, really? You're going to ask guys that's been in retirement? Not only has Tim Tebow not thrown a pass in four years, Skip the dude's playing minor league baseball. And playing and very well, by the way. I hate to admit it, he's doing a pretty good job. Yeah, thank he's you. He's doing a pretty good job. <laughs> thank you. He ain't doing great. He ain't having no, no. Uh, Aaron Judge type season, but he's doing he okay. finally admit that, Shannon. He's doing okay, <laughs> Skip. Right now, Aaron Judge isn't having an Aaron Judge kind of season, just, just for the record. He's got go 35 ahead. homers. Yeah. He's going to be, he gonna be uh, uh. Skip, in 11 years, Jay Cutler has only directed <sighs> one top 15 scoring offense mm -hmm. in 11 years. So I'm going back to Denver with Mike Shanahan. Mm -hmm. I'm going with when he had Tressman and all these other, all these other coordinators. One time, even with Adam Gase, he didn't have a top 15 mm -hmm. offense. Scoring or passing, but now he's the he's the answer. A guy that's not a leader, a guy that's injury prone, a guy that's turnover prone, yep. and he's a better fit than Colin Kaepernick because not because of ability, but you know what the cause is. Skip, this is embarrassing. I'm with you on how you see what's happened to Colin Kaepernick. But in this case, just in this case, mm -hmm. I do think Jay Cutler is a little better fit than Colin Kaepernick is with Adam Gaze, strictly because of their history together. Adam Gaze believes in Jay Cutler. And just remember, when it looked like Jay Cutler was on the outside looking in, when it looked like nobody wanted Jay Cutler, when it certainly appeared that Miami had no place for Jay Cutler, mm -hmm. Adam Gaze was asked at the owners' meetings back on March 28th, as the quotes from March 27th, mm -hmm. about Jay Cutler. And these are his remarks about Cutler. And I've never heard any coach say these things about Jay Cutler. And they should resonate as we speak right now. My experience with Jay Cutler was very good. I don't get all the hatred towards him, said Adam Gaze. I see a guy that worked hard and did everything he could to help his team win. He sacrificed his body. To me, he was an athletic quarterback that can throw the ball. When you got to third down, you could call the worst play possible, and he would get the conversion. And again, not that they shocked the world in 2015, but under Adam Gaze, Jay Cutler finally looked like he grew up a little bit. He got the bad Brett Favre out of him, the rambling, gambling, I'm going to try any kind of throw possible kind of quarterback who threw way too many interceptions. And that year, that 2015 year, he had his career low in interceptions, his career high in percentage completions, mm -hmm. and his career best in quarterback rating, all in 2015. Now, as you said, they went 6-10, and 10, but his three top wide receivers all missed an average or each missed an average of six games that year. So they were often hurt. They were always hurt and, and down a man or two at wide receiver. And then if you look at their games that year, they lost a bunch of games by eight points or less. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven by eight points or less. So they were in a lot of games that they didn't quite pull off. And the point was that – Finally, Jay Cutler let somebody coach him for the first time in his career. I don't even think Mike Shanahan broke through with him, sort of got through to Jay. And the best thing that Adam Gaze taught Jay Cutler to do was get rid of that bad body language, the shrugging shoulders and the dropped head. As Jay ran off the field after an interception, and he had only 11 that year, 
career low, 21 touchdowns mm -hmm. to 11 interceptions. Adam Gaze got away with yelling at Jay Cutler, head up, head up. And that's the guy that I think he wants to coach again. What I love about Adam Gaze is, and by the way, Peyton Manning has sung his praises from the start, and they yeah. crossed paths in Denver, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yep. And says he's brilliant, says Peyton Manning, on all things football, and that he is a grinder, a hard worker. And Adam Gaze clearly wants to win now. And an opportunity presented itself because of the injury now to Ryan Tannehill. I, I'm on record with this. This isn't 2020 hindsight. I'm not a Ryan Tannehill guy. And I said it before the draft. I said he reminds me of a wide receiver playing quarterback. He's very athletic, but he was a wide receiver for most, uh, not most, but half of his time at Texas a and Correct. And because of that, I've never loved his feel for football. And if you look at his QBRs over his five years, they're below average. He, he, in the, the five total years, he's 21st in the NFL and QBR. They got away with making the playoffs last year, as you well know. Ten wins. But if you look at the ten wins, it's Browns. They got the Steelers and shocked them at home. That's their most impressive. They beat the Bills twice, the Jets twice, the Chargers, the Rams, the 49ers, and the woeful last year Cardinals. So, so they did what they were supposed to do on a schedule that's set up right for them. And then, obviously, with Matt Moore as their backup quarterback, they went up to Pittsburgh and pretty much laid a, a cold-weather egg up there. So, will they be better with Jay Cutler? I believe they will be better with Jay Cutler. And again, I've defended him. He went to my school. But still, he was the SEC Offensive Player of the Year, and he did make a Pro Bowl in Denver for Mike Shanahan, who traded up to get him with, what was it, the 11th overall yeah, pick in the up. draft. Mm -hmm. So, you believe in Mike Shanahan. Shanahan saw a lot in Jay Cutler enough to trade up for him and try to make him the franchise quarterback. I know all the negatives, but I believe with Adam Gaze, the positives slightly, slightly outweigh the negatives. And I just believe he's better than Ryan Tannehill. Is Jay Cutler better than Colin Kaepernick? It, not in a vacuum, but but in this situation, I would take him just because of his connection with Adam Gaze, because I think he listens and respects Adam Gaze, that, that he'll... He'll let Adam Gaze coach him for the first time in his career. So I think he kind of grew up under Adam, and then it all went to hell, so to speak, last year under John Fox without Adam Gaze in Chicago. Skip, of all the things, I mean, he said he was smart, he was tough. He is tough now. He's taking as much yeah. punishment as any quarterback uh, I've ever Call the watched. worst plays, and he makes something out of it. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing you've never heard a coach or a player say about Jay Cutler? Starts with a W. Winner. Oh, 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 mm -hmm. oh, whoa. Hold on, Skip. Mm -hmm. Now, even Tim Tebow, you would say this. Does he throw the prettiest of passes? Mm -hmm. No. Is he, the, is he the best quarterback throwing from the pocket? No. Does he always make the best decision? But what do you always say about him, Skip? Well, if I could take the 20... What year was that, 11? Yep. If I could take the 2011 Tim Tebow mm -hmm. and fast-forward him into 2017 Miami, I would take him over both these guys because all he does is win. And with Adam Gaze, that would be a great fit, a win-now fit to try one shot to take it another step in the playoffs. But again, he hasn't even played the position since, as you point out, 2011, in part because the league just rejected him in a very different way than it's rejected Colin Kaepernick. But rejected him nonetheless. But Skip, you saw what you did when you said when he had Adam Gase as his, co as his uh, coordinator, uh, as coaching coordinator, in 2015, you said his top three receivers had missed, told, missed six games each. Yes. Average of six games each. Yep. What was... You make it seem like all of a sudden Colin Kaepernick was throwing to Jerry Rice, Terrell Lawrence, John Taylor. He wasn't. I agree. Oh. Colin Kaepernick had two really good years. Yeah. And, and three more... Not bad years. Last year was not bad. Right. It wasn't great. He's never been a high percentage guy. But see, and this is the thing, though, Skip. When I say Colin Kaepernick threw 16 touchdowns with four interceptions, yep. they say, but but he was 15, was 10, 2 and 14. It was terrible. Well, then people turn around and say, what? Yeah. Uh, uh, Jay Cutler had his mm -hmm. best season under Adam. They were 6 and 9. He threw double-digit touchdowns, I mean, interceptions. There's not been one season in which he started ten, t more than 10 games that he hasn't thrown double-digit interceptions. Mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick has a better by one touchdown, touchdown to interception ratio. He's six points higher career-wise on QBR, stats that everybody value. So by an all in, 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 uh, uh, indications, Colin Kaepernick is a better quarterback. Now, Colin Kaepernick has had three head coaches 
in his last three years. He has. Because they ran the so best don't, coach. Don't start with all the head coaches Jay Cutler's had and all the coordinators. And why did he have them, Skip? Well, I don't know. Why did Colin have them? Because they, they pushed John Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh, Jim, excuse me. out the door. They pushed him agree. out the door. And then they gave the Thomas Sula. Then they found out he wasn't the guy. And then they had Chip Kelly. Then they found out he wasn't the guy. Mm -hmm. So that had nothing to do with Colin Kaepernick. Yep. That had to do with them and their dislike of uh, Jim Harbaugh mm -hmm. and the, what he wanted a little more power. And they said no. So Trent Baalke won the battle I but ended it. up losing the war. Jim Harbaugh was Colin Kaepernick's Adam Gaze. It was a great connection. Jim did everything in his power to make Colin believe in himself and put Colin in the perfect positions to succeed with his skill set. And it was a beautiful thing. I've told you 20 times on this show, I wish I could make it happen that Jim Harbaugh could be coaching an NFL team right now that would take Colin Kaepernick because great things would happen. So, Adam, if, if, if Adam Gase is Cutler's Jim Harbaugh mm -hmm. to Colin Kaepernick, yep. where's the Super Bowl appearance? Well... Again, I think they got a chance because they're pretty good this year. Let's see what they do. I think they got a chance to make some noise. I don't think they can get out of Foxborough alive, but I think they can make the playoffs. I do. If I'm a defensive back and I play in the AFC East, I'm on the jugs machine every day. Okay. Because I know he's going to give me an opportunity to get some interceptions. If I'm a defensive Well, he guy, gave you only 11 in 2015, which was by far his career best. And only – Skip, think about that, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. He threw 11 interceptions. He's never had a season. What, mm -hmm. that he has not thrown when he played 10 or more games. So if he, he's going to play, you're counting on him doing what, Skip? It's not so much that he throws the interceptions. Where, when, yep. and how he throws the interceptions is what's matter. Yep. It's the pick sixes. Mm -hmm. It's the, uh, uh, the red zone INTs. Yep. It's the strip sacks that he's allowing. See, you talk about uh, interceptions. What about the fumbles? <sighs> he's always been a high turnover machine, Skip. And everybody keeps saying, oh, he's so talented, Skip. He's Jeff George. He's this He's this generation's Jeff George, immensely talented. But Jeff George was a rockhead. Jay Cutler has high football IQ. He just try. He, he thinks he can throw things that cannot be thrown by any human being. That's yeah. what he thinks. Look, I don't, I don't, all I care about is can the guy get me into the end zone? Yep. What type, what player has said Jay Cutler? I mean, thank Ask Erlacher. Ask some of his teammates. Okay. We hear and, and we hear what they say publicly, but we know what. But Brian Erlacher, when he first got there, went on the radio and trashed him. Briggs did the same okay. thing. I got it. Okay, I'm with you, but we have to deal with the elephant in our room right now, and that is that Colin Kaepernick basically disqualified himself in Miami with the Fidel Castro T-shirt. He just did. And then especially with the remarks he made on the conference call to the Miami reporters back in late November, uh -huh. and especially Armando Salguro of the Miami Herald, was a former Cuban exile who was allowed to, he, he barely escaped Miami with his mother. They kept his father back. And he was outraged by what he considered offensive and uninformed remarks in this conference call with Colin Kaepernick. And I'm sure a lot of the Cuban exiles, and there are many, many living in Miami or in the, the area, would still be offended by this. So is it a deal breaker? I, I don't know. I don't know the thinking of the owner, but I think to them that would mean as much as the anthem protests are a problem elsewhere. So let me ask you a question. This country values its vets and its military. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yep. There's a there's a, a guy that was running for president, John McCain, in Vietnam, spent five years as a prisoner of war. There was a, this one guy, I forget his name, slips my tongue, I, I slips my mind, mm -hmm. Joy. He was running for president. He's called John McCain, a war hero, a veteran, called him a loser because he was captured. People applauded, and guess what happened on November 8th, Skip? The very guy that disrespected. Yeah, I don't know what that has to do with what we're talking about here. So now... Fidel Castro was on a T-shirt with Malcolm no. X, and they met in 1960. Skip. I don't know how you can defend this one. I'm not trying to defend... Yeah. Well, I'm trying to defend how America defend all these cops killing unarmed black men okay, and women. Okay, we get that, and you know I'm with but, you but on that, but you, can't, you, you cannot discount how deeply the Cuban they, exiles I'm feel. not discounting it, Skip. Yeah. But why is it that we care yeah, so much? It's just the one city. It, was, it, it opened up as an opportunity, and just so ironically, it was the one city where Colin's going to have an issue beyond what really matters to Colin and you. So I don't even know that the, the anthem protests uh, 
issue applied in Miami. It's a very unique situation because yeah. Stephen Ross actually he, he supported. Yeah, he's the, he was the that only owner. It. But when Tannehill went down, and I know the Miami market very well, yep. and this team obviously very well, it, it thought never crossed my mind that Kaepernick would get an opportunity here because of what happened there. Right. And ironically, what Colin Kaepernick is trying to do is bring awareness yes. to the suffering yes. of minorities. And this is a situation where now you know, the Cuban people in Miami feel like he was ignorant to their suffering. So it's a bit of a conundrum there. And, you know, maybe just a conversation will fix that. But it's just, it's, 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 too, it's too much of an issue. And, I don't, and I, again, I don't think that the anthem protest was an issue in this particular spot. It's no. just a very unique situation. And I, don't, I don't want to come off as dismiss, dismissive of the Cuban, uh, uh, the, the population and what they went through in Cuba and how, had they, how they had to come to America. But we are so... We're, we're, <laughs> That, but what's going on in Chicago? I mean, all Colin Kaepernick did was try to bring attention, and we don't want to. We don't want to address that. We're still talking about the protests. Well, see, I still agree with you uh, as it applies to every other team, yeah, literally sure. every other team in the league. I just think this is this a is the one situation. It's the it's one just, place. It's so unfortunate because it it screamed for Colin Kaepernick, except for this. Yeah, and yeah. I do think Miami fans uh, overall, if that hadn't happened, yep. would have accepted and wanted Colin Kaepernick. It's just it's just a unique situation. No mercy. Hey guys, before we move on, I wanted to tell you that the Undisputed Podcast is brought to you by Barbasol. The biggest thing to happen to Barbasol since shaving cream is also the only thing to happen to Barbasol since shaving cream. Introducing new Barbasol razors. The brand America trusts for a close, comfortable shave now has premium disposable razors. Barbasol's close shave technology on every razor means you get an advanced pivoting head and ultra thin open flow blades. The Ultra 6 Plus Razor also features a seventh blade specifically designed to refine and style tricky areas like under the nose, sideburns, and beard. Visit Barbersol.com and get a $2 savings coupon and see for yourself why Barbersol razors are the number one new disposable razors out there. You're looking good, America. You're shaving with Barbersol. No mercy. There's been some interest in Colin Kaepernick this offseason, but he remains unsigned. First it was the Seahawks, then last week it was the Ravens, and now the Dolphins, who all showed interest in Cap but ultimately passed. We're joined once again by Chris Carter. Chris, we haven't heard your opinion on Kaepernick in a while. So what's your view on the situation now? I'm sick of the NFL owners. Like, seriously. In 2017, that everyone realizes that what Cap did. Mm -hmm. And it's not even a matter was, was it right or was it wrong? Like, I mean, this is America. We got a right to free speech. We have a right to protest. And I thought our football was the absolute best. I thought since the time we were eight years old, when we come out there and throw the ball out there, the best players are always going to be here. Yep. Like, that is the American way. And we're doing a disservice in sports at any level if we would keep someone partici from participating and it not be based on their overall ability. Right. I mean, we're telling... Our partners, we're telling TV, we're telling the fans, the NFL, it's the best of the best. Well, you can't say that in the quarterback situation. You can't say that with Colin Kaepernick. You can't say, me, and I come in and work out, then they bring in another guy from arena football, I go home, they don't even talk to me about contract, and they sign this guy who can't play dead. Like, there's only a few guys who can play quarterback in the NFL. Let's just stop tripping. And he is one of them. He has proven it over a long enough period of time that there should be no excuse except unless you were saying, I'm going to hold what he did last year. Against him. Against him. Like, you can call it black ball. You can call it whatever you want to. They plan by their own rules. It's like you're going down to the finish line and you're getting ready to nudge at the tape and they move the tape. <laughs> so for me, I'm sick of the NFL owners. I'm really sick of them because they control this. Because this, if this was up to general managers and coaches, he would be signed. Yep. And at least you would have had a conversation about compensation or money. Now, Jay Cutler. Retired. He was retired, though. God bless him. He was retired. Quit a job. Did Ten go? million and three million in incentive. Now. But see, so you got to add this point. He didn't know if he wanted to continue to do what was required to play the position in the NFL. Wait a minute. When Jay Cutler made 15, 16, 17, 18 million dollars the last three years in Chicago, he looked like he didn't care. Now, I am going to tell you something because this is something I got some experience with. I quit playing football. I retired. 
Somebody called me about six weeks into the season. And let me tell you something. There is no amount of courage that when you put those cleats up, you put everything up with it. And you can't take the amount of detail and the amount of sacrifice, pick that up and say, okay, you know something? I'm going to play again. Now, Jay Cutler, when he was being compensated in Chicago, he, looked like he, looked like he could have been other places. Mm -hmm. Except for 2015. Under mm -hmm. Adam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I, I understand that. But, but for me, I still want to have a discussion because for me, cap is a viable option. Now, if you tell me, based on Miami's personnel, yes, I believe that, that okay, Cutler might be a better fit. I'm willing to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. But to not even have Kaepernick in the picture and not even have him on, because every NFL front office has a board of guys who are signed, guys who are street-free agents, they have them grouped up. So they know the first person to call. And it seems like Collins' name is either not on the board the way they would normally run an NFL boardroom. Right, Shannon? Correct. Or they're going over his name and going to people underneath him. We need a quarterback, but just not you as our quarterback. Because what? We, think about this, kid. I mean, CC. Mm -hmm. They had Tim Tebow and Kyle Lorton and Colin Kaepernick on the list. Only because of their connections with gays. He had not, not, coached them. Uh, my, now, mind you, <laughs> Tim Tebow has not played for Adam Gay since 2011. He hasn't thrown a pass since December 17, 2012. Kyle Orton retired in 2014. And a guy that last threw the ball in January of 2017, we're going to not only have they not played, Tim Tebow is playing minor league baseball. We reached now. Colin Kaepernick needed to tell us he wanted to still play. Colin yes. Kaepernick also needed to tell us because well, he was asking for too much money, man. He, right, he get, right. I mean, he, he, he won't accept the backup role. And also he cleared up the fact that I'm not going to protest. I'm not going to take a knee for the national anthem. That was another thing people needed to know. They, need, they needed to hear that. He ain't black ball. He got white ball. And as Skip mentioned earlier, there's 70% of the, the uh, uh, players in the NFL is 70% 70, 70 black, African-American. Yep. Yes. But there's 100% ownership. See, the biggest mistake that we made as African-Americans and a lot 100 of... 100 white. White. Yes. The biggest mistake we made as an African-American, Skip, is that when President Obama got elected in 20, 2008, mm -hmm. we actually thought everything was going to be better. But here's the problem that we ran against, is that President Obama can institute policy, but he couldn't hire anybody. He wasn't CEO of Google or Microsoft or Apple, so he was in no position to help the black community increase their wealth. And so then people like, well, he didn't help me. I lost out. See, the, we have no black owners. See, the general managers, the black ones we have, like you said, Skip, they got a boss. They do. See, when you got a boss, you got to an answer to, even though Ozzie Newsom has probably made every decision. Now, when you sign somebody $70, $80 million extension, mm -hmm. obviously you got to run it by the owner. That's his money. But I can assure you, for the most part, every free agency that they've, every free agent that they've signed, mm -hmm. every draft, Ozzie Newsom has been given the green light that says, okay. But not in this one. They took that from Ozzy. Sponsors, what do you think? Fan base, what do you think? Now we're asking fans and sponsors to make personnel decisions. Now, we've heard this way. We want this guy. We want this guy. And we're coaches. We want that. Say, if you listen to the fans, pretty soon you'll be up in the stadium with them. Mm -hmm. But now, Colin Skip, I believe in First Amendment. I also believe in the owner's First Amendment, that they can hire and fire whomever they want. But just tell me it's because of my ability. Mm -hmm. You're lying to me because mm -hmm. I know it's not Colin Kaepernick's ability. Mm -hmm. It's because of what he did, and you too coward to say it. I've said they were cowards. I said they blackballed from the very beginning. And punishment is this is what punishment is meant to do to punish the offender, but to deter all others who might mm -hmm. commit such said acts. We know what's going on, Skip. We need a quarterback. <laughs> Cap, we just don't need you as our quarterback. And to get Jay Cutler, who's in retirement, a guy that told you he retired. You signed him, but the guy that was wanting to be active, he needs to tell you he wants to play. And you were talking about signing a guy that hadn't thrown a ball in four years playing minor league baseball and another guy that hadn't played in two years. And you're thinking about bringing them out of and retirement. And both of them stunk like a baby's diaper when they did quit. Ooh, Skip, this boy just stinks. Now, unless they got better in retirement, something I've never seen happen before. Oh, uh, like Jay Cutler? Now, all of a sudden. They keep talking about, oh, he played so good in 2015. He was 6-9 and because he started 15 games. 
They were 23rd in pass offense. They were 23rd in scoring offense. There's only 32 teams. So there were only nine teams. His greatest season as, as, as he had with Adam Gase, Jay Cutler, was ninth from the bottom in offense and scoring. But it was a great, but Colin Kaepernick threw 16 and 4. But that team was terrible. Colin Kaepernick does well, and they lose the team's terrible. He's terrible. They win, go to the Super Bowl. You see all that talent? Jim Harbaugh, who that? Man, y'all need this time out for y'all. Mm. Okay, we got to mention one more time, and I don't want to pile on to this, but the T-shirt that Colin Kaepernick wore before the season started after his first game, first preseason game, with Malcolm X and Fidel Castro, and then later in November, the offensive remarks that he made to the reporters in Miami that they felt were, at least one reporter felt were uninformed. I just think that burned his bridge for the one owner that I believe would have stepped up in favor of Colin Kaepernick, Stephen Ross, who did speak out in favor of the Dolphin players who knelt, I believe they knelt in protest, right? I don't think they sat. They so knelt. what about all the criminals we have planned to leave? Okay, well, I got that, but this is one thing where you have a okay. big population of Cuban exiles in Miami who are just not going to okay. be able to get over this. Okay. But let's, okay, let's... I just want to ask you one okay. thing, Skip, before you go. Did they not know that before they were thinking about Colin Kaepernick? So his name should have never came up. They knew he wore the T-shirt last year. So why even bring his name up? I don't know who brought his name up. Did they publicly speak about Kaepernick? Yeah. I don't remember. Salgaro said Kaepernick, Kyle Orton, and Tim Tebow was also on the list had Jay Cutler not signed. Okay, so he well, brought it up. Okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> but, but again, they had this discussion, and I'm assuming they're saying that's a non-starter for us at this point. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately and ironically, this would be the one place he would have fit in because of the owner's open-mindedness mm -hmm. to the anthem protest. Right. But big picture, I'm so with you because I've told you before, well, I don't have time to go back through them, but there are six or eight starting quarterbacks right now who are not as good as Colin Kaepernick. Those are starting Josh quarterbacks. McCown. Okay, I can just keep going. But, mm -hmm. but again, I, I really don't, it's like beneath Kaepernick's dignity to be somebody's third string quarterback, like the Cowboys signed Luke McCown. Do I want Colin no, Kaepernick yeah, yeah. to be Luke McCown? I don't. He's, he's so much better than that. And I did see one interesting quote from Adam Gaze, and he was actually talking about Cutler, but he said, it's not as easy as people think it would be when you've been a starter for your entire career and then all of a sudden be like, okay, I'll be a backup. I don't want to see Colin Kaepernick as a backup because in his head, he's not a backup quarterback. Has he not been anything but a – except for his first, first year, year, obviously. But has he been nothing but a starting quarterback? That's all he's ever been. So does, it, he, does he deserve off last year to be a starter? I said it from the start. I thought he was pretty good last if year. Adam okay, said, wait, oh, see, 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 let me get this. I got to get this one in. Now, think? he says it's hard for you to be a starter all your life and then be a backup. Well, how easy is it to be terrible and turn the ball over all your life and all of a sudden be good? Well, again, with the one year he, that Jay Cutler was under Adam Gaze, he was pretty good. Okay. Most Th efficient is, stats of his okay. career. This is, this is what I'll tell you, too, Skill. And, and I'm with you on that. From a technical standpoint, mm -hmm. from an eye standpoint, yep. Jay Cutler was a lot better in 2015 distributing the football, being connected with the offensive coordinator, the blitz reads, the protections. Yes. And also, he got that coached one, that for one. The, He let this guy coach him. It's the only guy he's ever let coach him on his bad body language. He would yell at him as he came off the field, get your head up, because he, he gets his slump shoulders. And for the first time ever, he was actually, dare I say, They say efficient. that comes from Vanderbilt and everything because of the pressure, um, <laughs> from the pressure hey, academically. He, he was <laughs> the <laughs> offensive player of the year in the SEC. That's pretty great. What have you, and no coach or no player has ever heard of this word behind Jay Cutler, winner. Well, look, I think it's a stretch to say that we're, that anyone in the organization is optimistic other than Gase. And Gase is going to have to wear this now because this is his decision and his guy. Yeah. I'm certainly not optimistic about the Dolphins this year in this. but I did talk be... to Marino this weekend, and Marino said that they're not far away. And he believes that right. Cutler might be able to do what they were trying to get Tannehill to do because they're really strong offensively, not to interrupt. Okay. Well, and by the way, Cut I, this is just me, and I'm, I'm going back before that draft. Cutler is better than Tannehill. And maybe that's not saying much, but that's how little I think. Yeah. I would have Tannehill. loved to see Kaepernick get this job, and I hope that he does. I just think it's going to be a terrible scar in the NFL if someone doesn't sign yep. it. Yep. No mercy. This was the picture that Chris Carter posted on Saturday with his bus right next to Shannon's at the Hall of Fame. And now we're joined by the host of First Things First, which debuts on September 5th. Oh, yeah. Right here on FS1, yeah. Chris Carter, That's welcome terrible. back. Yeah. If, in fact, the bus speak after hours, right, then, Man, then he's just going to talk your ear off <laughs> relentlessly.
Chris, we've been oh. talking the whole night. We talk about what we're going to talk about coming on the show. There ain't no need to sleep. You know what? In the morning, we wake up a lot smarter. <laughs> so why, why are you smiling and he's got... Yeah, you look so mean. Scowl That's his game face. Oh. Game face, yeah. I had to get ready. That's your <laughs> scary face? <laughs> yeah, Skip. Mm. They did a good job I need to go in there. I need to make sure there wasn't no dust on him. No, 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 no. no. Okay. You're good. Keep him clean? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, Chris. Chris, let's talk about a guy you know well, Ezekiel Elliott. The Cowboys are still waiting to hear if Zeke will be suspended to start the season. And Jerry Jones was asked about a possible suspension on Friday. Let's take a listen. I do not anticipate a suspension. I um, uh, don't want to uh, basically uh, uh, be too uh, be be too uh, uh, let's say. Uh, proactive about how I feel uh, because that's not going to make any difference here at all. Um, what I don't want it to do is hurt things about how I feel. And so uh, uh, that's, that's that. But uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, when you uh, look at everything that I'm aware of, uh, then I'm not anticipating a suspension. Chris, what are you hearing about the suspension? You know, contrary to what Jerry's hearing, um, I've heard that we shouldn't be surprised, and, and especially after you've played this extra preseason game. Now, people will try to say, because Jerry was being inducted in the hall, well, maybe the league didn't want the suspension or a ruling, potential ruling, potential suspension, to come out during the Hall of Fame week. And that really has nothing to do with it. If you look at uh, the DB, the starting DB for Air, um, Atlanta Falcons, Collins, yeah. he, he just got suspended. Mm -hmm. Ten games. And this is really kind of when the league starts. That extra, that fifth preseason game for Hall of Fame week. Mm -hmm. But this is really the four weeks. Now, for me, in the next 48 hours, I would be shocked if Zeke was not suspended. Mm. Like, I'll, I'll be shocked. Why? If we get to Thursday, because based on the information that's going to come out, right. it's going to be fairly easy to determine that something happened to this woman in her four days of being with Zeke. Now, we're not talking about... Um, I mean, this is just pure either assault or domestic violence. So... I'm being sensitive because there, there is a victim here. Right. Yep. You know, so for me, this is a, it's a great opportunity to continue to learn. Um, we've learned an awful lot in the last two years dealing with the National Football League and its players being involved in altercations. And there's been a precedent set, not only on the assault and domestic violence side, saying that there would be a minimum six games on that side, mm -hmm. but there was a precedent set with the GOAT and Tom Brady when they suspended him for on-the-field conduct four games. So the brightest star that we have in our game, Tom Brady, they suspended him. And when the information comes out, there's going to be some similarities uh, as far as what happened. Um, information that, that might have, that he had been advised possibly to give up that was destroyed. So there's going to be a number of things right. that, will, that will come out that people will be able to determine not only did something happen, who was the person responsible for that, and the precedent's been set in the league um, with Tom with a, a four-game suspension. So that part right there, you know, I don't want to get into exactly what he's going to get, but from what I'm hearing, it will be, based on those two precedents, it will be in that range so some information the league is aware of did not get to the two police departments that investigated in columbus ohio and fort lauderdale florida right because they both cleared well, that they he, he was well, never charged right. right they didn't yes. find enough to charge him right 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 now based on the nfl the nfl has a panel of experts that being people in law and also professional doctors um, that that they, deal with this kind of stuff with women being abused and how they will respond to certain situations. Yes. So they probably call the lady in. Yes. I and, mean, and people, there is a witness. It's her. <laughs> An eyewitness. She was there. You know, so I just, Jerry, I understand. No, I, I, I understand what he's saying. But there's going to be, uh, 
very disturbing information that be, will be released. Now, we've seen the pictures. I mean, the pictures have started to, to kind of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, leak out there and everything. So what happened to her mm -hmm. in these four days when she was with him, that will be kind of the crux of what the investigation and his punishment will be based on. So why would Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, now in the Hall of Fame, repeatedly say, quote unquote, there's nothing there to her accusations? And went so far as to, as we saw in this clip that we just saw, I do not anticipate a suspension and then ended it by saying, I don't want to do anything to hurt things, which it would seem to me he's You're just the, daring them, yeah. right? He's just, he, he's defiant about this. Uh, we saw the same thing. Same thing happened with Tom. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll take it to their grave. Mm -hmm. All right? They, Mr. Kraft, I've talked to him this offseason. Like, they would, they will go down <laughs> with the ship. Like, I understand Jerry. Jerry is the public defender for the Dallas Cowboys and has been for 30 years. So the public defender, they represent the guilty and the innocent. Right. Jerry is a dad. There is no better dad in the NFL yep. than Jerry Jones. No question for, about For that. his players. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because that's how he treats them. And he uh, you mentioned, Skip, you remember, and, it's, and this thing, he mentioned Tony Romo. He said Tony Romo didn't win a championship, didn't play for a conference championship. But he said Tony Romo was under more pressure than any other quarterback. Starback, Aikman. That won and was expected to win, yep. but Tony Romo had more pressure. So it lets you know how he feels about his guy. I always felt. It also lets you know, too, that he has his own reality. Uh, correct. Because Troy Aikman was the first pick in the draft, 1-15. in 15. There was a little pressure there. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't even win the job his first year. Exactly. He split in time uh, with Steve Walsh. Yeah, there, were, there, there was a little pressure there. I've always felt that Zeke was going to get some kind of punishment. And people were quick to say, well, there's no charges, there's no charges. But when you got seven or eight incidences involving Cowboys and the common denominator is Zeke Elliott, something is going on here. Now, all of a sudden, the victim said, that was Zeke Elliott that hit me. Then the next day, you know, and they subsequent days, they can't find him. Ain't nobody want to talk. Now, all of a sudden, he's going to be showing up on the sideline for the Cowboys. I'm not saying, Skip, he got to get some tickets, but I'm saying, Skip, he's going to be showing up on the sideline. Now, he's going to be in the box. Because there's two, there's two things, too, here. Um, is Zeke, does he really know what wrong is? Because he didn't help himself. Like, his conduct in all the other things did not help this. Right. Now, what do they have to do with either? It has to do with reputation. And the other thing is, if after seeing the photos and after the information comes out, if, if there is no punishment, what are we creating? Like, what do we? Is he superhuman? He's above the law? He's above the morals? The conduct the man should should conduct himself with with the woman. Like, where is he there? That's a question that I would ask myself and any other person that might be close to the situation. And I mean, then the the Mardi Gras thing with the putting the, the putting the ladies top down. You mean Saint Saint Patrick's, Patrick's Day? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, I mean, that's what. And then you in the bars and obviously, you know, a lot of time there. What, what's involved? Skip, you say what's involved? Alcohol and and it, it breaks down your inhibitions. It doesn't change your behavior. It changes. You know, mm -hmm. you are what you are. You think whatever you thought about sober. They say that the drunken man is a sober man's thought. Absolutely. And you see here, Skip. I'm telling you, I, it's going to be hard for me to believe that the NFL does not suspend Zeke Elliott for at least two to four games. Now, what Chris is saying that if this information, that information that the NFL has. Mm -hmm. And that they're going to, you know, talk about what they know as opposed to what Jerry, because Jerry probably doesn't know this. NFL is going to come down. I'm, I'm pretty certain that the NFL in 2017, given what they've been through in the last two years, I just, it's just a hunch. They're going to lay it out so the public can read it. Bam, 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 bam. It's going to be clear. Crystal. So how will this make the investigators and the police departments in Columbus and Fort Lauderdale look when all this is made public? What make them look like they were remiss in doing their homework? Well, it, it, the fact of the matter is they can feel however they want to feel. Mm. You know, the NFL, the scrutiny that we're under, there is no fandom when it comes to the players. 
And that was the problem a couple years ago. Mm. Was the league doing things to give the players the benefit of their doubt or keeping information from the public? Mm -hmm. You know, what they did in Columbus and what they did in Dallas, the, man, they, they have sworn an oath unto themselves to do their job the best that they can do. But Roger Goodell and those at the league office, they have sworn an oath to the public because the reason why the NFL benefits is because publicly we have made it the most popular sport in America. Mm -hmm. Right. Plus, the NFL can sometimes get into places that police departments, you know, because of the laws in different places can't get into. In they can get information sometimes that they can't get. If we really want to find out the information. Right. So I'm well. going to look a little harder. But if I don't. Yeah. No mercy. Before we move into the next topic, I want to bring in Skip and Shannon to tell you about a great offer for our listeners from Saks Underwear Company. Hey guys, you may think all underwear is created equal. Well then, you haven't tried Saks Underwear. Stop putting up with an uncomfortable pair you'll end up throwing out in a few months. Go with the quality and comfort offered by Saks. Whether you're traveling or working out or going head-to-head -head with an NFL Hall of Famer on TV every morning, Saks Underwear has what you need to stay cool and comfortable. Take it from a former Super Bowl champ. Comfort is very important when you work out. You don't want something too snug. You don't want something too loose. You want something that will absorb the moisture, but you feel comfortable in it. And the more comfortable you are when you work out, I believe, the longer you will work out. And that's the most important thing. So I am glad I got an opportunity to try Saks Underwear Company, and they're working great for me. Outside Magazine just had an article about how Saks has revolutionized underwear the same way Gore-Tex revolutionized jackets. And it's true. Saks has taken something we all need and made it better. Quality, support, and comfort. Everything you need. We want you to try Saks underwear with our special limited time deal. Go to our URL, saksunderwear.com slash undisputed and you'll get 20% off your first purchase. Pick up a few pairs. That's Saks with two X's, S-A-X-X. -X. Underwear.com slash undisputed for 20% off your first purchase. Thanks, guys. That's SaksUnderwear.com slash undisputed for 20% off your first purchase. That's Saks with two X's. One more time, that's SaksUnderwear.com slash undisputed. Now back to the show. No mercy. Jerry Jones was inducted into the Hall of Fame on Saturday. During his speech, he thanked Jimmy Johnson. Johnson was Jerry's first head coach in 1989 and went on to lead the Cowboys to back-to-back -back titles before Johnson and Jerry parted ways after the 93 season. Let's take a listen to Jerry on Jimmy. The changes were really inevitable. There was no real easy way to do it. I wanted someone I knew. I wanted someone I knew well. I wanted someone that could get it done to be our coach. I wanted Jimmy Johnson. I said he'd be worth five first round draft choices or five Hasman Trophy draft winners. Of course, I should have did get laughed out of town when I said it. It was my first experience as an owner and a general manager in making a difficult and very unpopular decision. Jimmy, it was a great decision. You were a great teammate. You were a great partner. To the contrary of popular belief, we worked so well together for five years and restored the Cowboys' credibility with our fans. We were back to back, we were driven, we had thick skin, we took all the criticism, make a dish out. I thank you. After the ceremony, Jerry talked about their reported strained relationship and said our differences, while they were certainly visible in magnitude because of the nature of it, if you really look at our friendship over the years, there's just not that much to fuss about. And so it was pretty easy to reflect back on his contribution and what he meant. Mm. Skip, mm. Mm. Skip, how surprised were you by this? I was stunned. Really? I know too much. They had a whole lot to fuss about. And by the way, we didn't see the part that Jerry glossed over when it came to the firing of Jimmy after winning back-to-back -back Super Bowls. He said during his speech to Jimmy, and I quote, after Jimmy screwed up, and then he went on into his next story. So he just dismissed that as it was your fault. He right. did not apologize. He went on and on about their t partnership and how they teamed up beautifully, and they did for a while. They did. But Jimmy was never, ever happy with it. 
and I wrote a whole book about this off the 1992 Cowboys season, the first Super Bowl season, at the end of which I predicted they wouldn't last much longer together because I saw what was happening from the inside out. And I took a lot of heat for that. And one year later, after another Super Bowl victory, Jerry fired Jimmy. Suffice it to say, I don't think in the history of pro football from, from here until the end of time that will ever happen again. No. They'll win two together, and then the owner will fire the head coach unless there's something off the field right. incident or something. Yep. Right? Back to back Super Bowl skip normally what? gets you at least 10 years. At least 10 years. So. I realize they're both 74 years of age now, and there's a lot of forgive and forget and bygones be bygones, but trust me on this. Deep down, there's still a big part of Jimmy Johnson who does not like Jerry Jones and all the things that happened between the two of them. The great thing was, thanks to your brother, on Saturday night, Jimmy Johnson had a legitimate reason to be there because he drafted your brother and your brother hung in through that early camp and then became a Hall of Famer. <laughs> and so it, it was perfect. It just sort of fell in Jimmy's lap. He would not have been there just for Jerry. He would not have sat still for that speech up on that stage just for Jerry. But he did do it for your brother. God bless him for that. But it was perfect because it gave him a reason and a quote unquote excuse to be up on stage and to sit literally sit still for that speech. And the point is that th this was the first time I ever saw Jimmy actually be a good sport about th something because just remember, his biggest problem with Jerry was that Jerry didn't spend one day coaching football. Jimmy started in Picayune, Mississippi as an assistant high school coach right. and worked his way up after they were teammates at Arkansas. Right. Jerry never spent one day learning how to be a front office executive, right. let alone a GM, right. right? And he went out and struck it rich in the oil fields and bought his way into the NFL as the owner and made himself the GM from day one of the Dallas Cowboys. And right away, Jerry wanted some credit for their breakthrough wins. That is correct. And Jimmy just couldn't stand it. And Jimmy began to make little asides to the media. And then, worse, he did have a boss, whether you liked it or not. His name was Jerry Jones, that guy at Arkansas who was a walk-on, sort of overachieving, but he did start at offensive guard for their national championship team. Yep. But uh, in front of front office staffers, in front of assistant coaches, he began to shame and ridicule the owner, Jerry Jones. Right. And it culminated with after they won their second Super Bowl at the league meeting, the assistant coaches were all at a restaurant around a big table, the whole group of them. Jerry walked up picked up a drink and, and proposed a toast to the Dallas Cowboys. And at the end of the table, Jimmy Johnson sat like this and wouldn't pick up his glass. And he proposed it again to the Dallas Cowboys. And Jimmy sat at the end of the table and just glared at him. And Jerry slammed the drink back on the table, walked straight out of the restaurant bar, went back to the hotel, gathered the reporters and said, I'm going to hire, I'm sorry, I'm going to fire Jimmy Johnson and hire Barry Switzer to coach the Cowboys. And they thought he maybe had a couple of too many drinks. Right. And you know the rest of the story. That's exactly what he did. So I, it, the, the blood got so bad at that point that for me, having lived it inside out, to watch that from my couch on Saturday night was was stunning to me. It, it made me feel good. It had a feel goodness to it, but I still believe there's a big part of Jimmy that'll never quite get over what happened. Skip, I think the thing is, I, I'm not really surprised because I believe time healed all wounds. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that it's a lot easier to move on when you don't have to come in contact with that person very often. Like you said, he was at this event because Jason asked Jimmy to be his presenter. He did. So there's a great chance. I don't know. Maybe uh, uh, Jimmy would have swallowed his pride and said, "You know what? I'm gonna. I'm not gonna let the bad outweigh the good. I'm gonna go and show my support." But Skip, when you don't have to see somebody regularly, yeah, you don't have to come in contact with them because Jerry lives in Dallas and Jimmy's on the water in Miami. He is. And they're not coming in contact very often. Yeah. I don't know how often they they get together with those first two Super Bowl teams. I don't know if, how often that happens or does Jimmy come back? Um, and, and also remember this, Jimmy's still on a level playing field because he isn't just good on our Fox broadcast. Yeah. He is great. Exactly. He, he's become 
an institution on that show to yeah. me. So you've got you, you're sort of 50. You're you're looking eye to eye with Jerry, and, and you're looking at a guy that really built the Cowboys from the ground floor because they were awful. As you mentioned, when My Michael got got there in '88, they were terrible. Yep. They got tr they got Troy in '89. They were terrible. They were like an expansion. Team, yeah, seriously. And so Jimmy terrible. Jimmy just kept building and he kept did. building because he knew the guys that were coming out of college because a lot of them he coached again and he tried to recruit. So he had a he had like a three year span, a four year span. Like he low, okay. If I get an opportunity, I'm gonna get that guy. Skip. But I think both of these guys are looking back and can't help but think. What could have been? <laughs> because they could have been the Patriots before the Patriots were the Patriots. Because this is what you got to understand. They won two Super Bowls. They won those back-to-back -back in 92 and 93, Skip. Michael, Troy, and Emmett was in their prime. Yep. They were yep. one year apart. They were at their apex. And Jimmy and Jerry wanted, you know, Jimmy wanted uh, uh, the credit and Jerry wanted the credit. You see, Coach. And, and by the way, Jerry deserves some yeah. of the credit. He pulled off the Charles Haley trade from your rival 49ers that yeah. put them over the top. He did go sign Dion that yeah. helped them win the that, – that would be after Jimmy. But If you look at Mr. Kraft, yeah. Mr. Kraft ain't worried about how no, much he credit. Doesn't. All he does is want the Commissioner Goodell to hand him that Lombardi. He's a guy that says, okay, Coach Belichick, you're the one that's grinding. Tom and the players, y'all doing that. I want y'all to get all the credit. But, Skip, you know what? People rarely, rarely talk about the fish that they caught on the wall. They talk about the one that got away. <laughs> and that's what we're seeing here because Jimmy and Jerry both know, Skip, what could have been. We're talking about the Steelers of the 70s, four and six years, or possibly five and eight years. That's what yeah. they could have done. Well, no one's won three in a row, exactly. so they could have at least yeah, won three yeah. in a row, and you're I think four. You're talking about immortality. And... I don't know if they're going to allow Jimmy, because I think Jimmy is a Hall of Famer. You look at what yeah. he did. Sure. He, he, he probably should be in well, the Hall throw, of Fame. Throw the college in, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's just, for me, Skip, I don't think about the Super Bowls I won. The game that haunts me is the divisional game to Jacksonville. That's the one I think about more. I don't even, the wins, Skip, they're there. I keep thinking, could we have won three in a row if we'd have done that one in 96 and played the Packers and played them again? What could have been? That's what drives you. And that's because, you know why, Skip? Because Jerry realized how hard it is. He got that one in 95, and he hasn't been close in over two decades. Mm -hmm. And he's looking back, too, like, yeah, we got three. I got three of these. There's five total. Yeah. But we probably should have seven or eight of these okay. things up in here. Just remember, these are two men with huge egos mm -hmm. and quick triggers. Yes. Quick tempers. Yes. And that's it, after a while, it's it's going to be a finite lifespan. It's something's going to happen. Were, were, were they were they close in college? No, they, they were always. They everybody were talked about they were roommates, and they were only roommates because their names fell in perfect alphabetical order. So they got Johnson. paired by Johnson and Jones. Right. That's why they're roommates. Egos they, will get you every time. That's the biggest part of dynasties is managing the egos and, and being unselfish. When you look at Tom Brady and Belichick and oh, Kraft, like you know, Cleveland, huh? Like they all have like the all, Cavaliers. Well, it's falling apart now. I wonder why. Huh. That, 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 that. Huh. Egos will get you wait, every time. You, you got to keep mean it in check. you mean the team that LeBron left and took his talents to South Beach? That I'm talking about right now. Yeah. Skip, you know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, now a dynasty? <laughs> so, so Kyrie is the only one that has an ego on that team? No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm saying egos when people start to uh, have. Yes, no, well, that's I what want, happens. I want more shots. But it, it didn't more surprise shine. me that he said, had a nice thing to say about Jimmy. He knew Jimmy was going to be up there. And uh, for the Hall of Fame, you're looking back on your whole career. You're reflecting right. on everything, you know. It's, you, get, you get sentimental with age. But it was Jerry's <laughs> night to be <laughs> sentimental. Yes, and, exactly. And Jimmy, Jimmy pulled me to the side. Jimmy said, hey. He said, I didn't get a chance to watch you on the old show because we were on at the same time. He said, you're doing a good job. He said, you know what you're talking about. Did I, he say that? Yeah, man. Oh. I said, yeah. I said, Jimmy, tell me that one more time because I want to tell Skip when I get back over. Trying, said, to, you, trying to butter you up. He's a, your know, teammates now, right? <laughs> he said, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I do, Skip. No mercy. I couldn't have made it in these 20 miles over 20 years if I didn't have you at my back, at my side, and out in front. My football career forever ends right here tonight. My gratitude is eternal. Thank you. Gotta have the tissue handy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, what a bucket, Joe. I that know. was just a little of a very powerful Hall of Fame induction speech given Saturday night. Mm -hmm.
Canton, Ohio, by Joy's brother, Jason Taylor. I was captivated as I watched it from my couch. Joy got to experience it in the front row. What was it like? What was the moment like live? You know, they call the Hall of Fame the most inspiring place on earth, and it, it really it really is. It reminds you why we love football so much and why we kind of hero worship a little bit because it just has that that feeling when you're there, just the, the drama of it and the lights and really seeing all the other Hall of Famers yeah. there is what puts it in perspective for you. But but to see your brother there, I mean, what, what was that? It's was incredible. It? It's incredible. I mean, I, it's I'm so proud of him. Obviously, can't can't say that enough, but it's. It's, there really isn't a, w a word to describe it. Having your whole family there, I honestly think that we had the second biggest crew next to Jerry. Jerry, you know, <laughs> Jerry like you guys spent $16 million dollars on the party. Uh, did not party. spend $16 nah. million on $16 the party. $16 million? Is that a real number? I had, I had one, of them, one of them homeboy $150 party. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jason had a very nice party, but uh, no, we were, we're very proud of him. It was a great weekend, family all being together and, and celebrating him. And uh, it's, I mean, it's it's the hall. It just doesn't get any better than that. It's just validating. It was Can't awesome. Can't get cut. Can't nope. get traded. Well, that's what he said. <laughs> and they got the bus right too. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was very spot on. They did a very good job. But um, I, I also thought his speech was great. All timer yes. speech. Mm. And so I knew now crack when Joy has more cachet than Shannon Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hold on, Joy. Hold on. Uh, she got to get. She got to get into the uh, the media hall of fame. That's yeah, right. Yeah. We're We're out out they do, they do have one of those wings in the hall of fame too. You know what? The Friday night, the gold jacket dinner was yeah. incredible too. It if is. You're, if you're an NFL fan, you you got to make that trip. Yeah. It was amazing to see. I've never been. There. Never been to uh, uh, Columbus. You should go. It's incredible. You're, you're to a see Cooperstown guy. Yeah. Huh? yeah. You're a Cooperstown guy. I'm a Cooperstown. <laughs> right. But I'm not I'm just. I've never been. Uh, no. Well, you got to go. It was. Go. You know, you should go. It was a. It was a great experience. Payment, I take you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about LeBron. He's back to posting his workouts on social media. Several posts appeared on Instagram Friday of LeBron rapping, working out, and sending messages to critics. In one post, LeBron said, "Quote: I will never lose." While another post said, "They want to see me fall. I know. I know." This came after Steph Curry appeared to mock LeBron's other workout video while Kyrie laughed. That's that crazy laugh there he's doing. Maniacal. Rob, what's your take? Shannon, so disappointing. Here we go. Why are you disappointed? Okay, here now? we go. We've had the low, Tom Brady. Yeah. Right? Luckiest uh -oh, of all here time. Here we go. Yeah. We had the Fofo, LeBron, <laughs> right? Finals failure of all time. Yes. We had the moat. For Dak Prescott, most overrated of all time, and LeBron steps in today with the Masot, M-S-O-A-T, the most sensitive of all time. <laughs> He's a Masot. That's where we are. We need T-shirts. We do. Yep. <laughs> Joy, what? I just think about this. LeBron is like the biggest star on the planet. He is. And he's yeah. so sensitive. Shannon, come every time. I've never seen a star want to be liked more than LeBron and want to be endorsed and want to be uh, validated by other people. And LeBron shouldn't be, I, I just, for all that he's accomplished, you don't need to be validated by anybody. And yet, he can't help himself. And every time something comes up, he has to respond rather than just letting it go. No. What would LeBron have done had Bird and Isaiah froze him out from the All-Star game and not passed him the boy. Boy would have had a, a heart he attack. Might have quit. He might have quit. Yeah. Well, well, I, I think we're, we're, we're a byproduct of the time that we live in, and everything is on social media. So now I don't have to wait till the reporter to tell me, well, did you hear what such and such did? Did you hear what such and such said? I get to do, guess what? I got my own, get my little, my, get my little gram right. Can, can I, I, I want to tell you one thing, okay? You always talk about your grandmother, grandfather stuff that yes. they tell you. Here's my mom, my late mom, Mary Parker. I came home one day and I was the typical little kid talking about they don't like me or whatever, you know, at school or something. Right. And she stopped me in my tracks and she said, everybody didn't like Jesus Christ either. You'll be just fine. And I think once you get over that, for me, that message rung for me, and, and I didn't look for endorsements from other people or, or feeling like everybody had to like me, okay? It's about respect. That's respect. all you need from people, not about but life, and LeBron needs to get but, over but this. But here's the thing, though, for people to constantly taking shots at him. What are they telling you, Rob? We don't respect. Not only do we not like you, we don't respect you. I got no problem. 
I don't have any problem with someone liking or disliking me. And I've said this before, and anybody that knows me will tell you, you ain't got to respect me, but I'll be damned if I let you disrespect me. And they keep coming for it. And LeBron is in this me social media. Guys respond. We got the guy sitting in the highest office. He'll respond to every little slight. We got guys in the media. They go back and forth on slights. It's, it's a different time, Rob, and I think the so thing wait, is... So, wait, are you now defending the guy who sits in the highest No, chair? no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not defending. I'm just saying... No, 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 I'm not defending. It's, it's, mm -hmm. But here's the thing. This is... I mean, he didn't call anybody out. He's like, I just can't lose. I can't fail. I mean, it's, it's metaphorically speaking. And you know guys do this now. That's like, got, di got diss tracks. I mean, we, we diss things now. I mean, Shaq, <laughs> Shaq came out with a diss track on a 50-year-old. Michael Jordan, the GOAT. Responded to a 50-year-old dad from Chino Hills, California. But that was okay when he did that. You got a problem with what he, Michael did? Michael wouldn't have done that as a player. How he do would you know? Not have. He How, wouldn't have. Hold on. He wouldn't he, have. He did it as the greatest player. He wouldn't have. You don't know that. Because Skip said he wouldn't do this. This was beneath him. And then Skip was heartbroken when he responded. I'm to the surprised ball. that my <laughs> Rob was I just said I was surprised. I, I, I'm no, surprised too that I'm heartbroken that, that he would even care. I agree. Me, oh. I, I agree. I'm I'm surprised that he would even care. So why would he care if somebody dis disrespected? But LeBron is still playing right now, yeah. and, and every little thing bothers should. him, and it should. Should he should just realize that as the top dog. People are always coming for you. People are always going to say something about... Even when they want to talk about people who don't matter. They don't waste time on people who don't matter, Skip, do they? Oh, Skip, Skip, baby. you're a top dog. They come after you every day. Do you respond? I get him do every you, day. Do you, Skip, do you respond on no. Twitter? No, you don't respond. I bust him up right here in person. I don't talk behind his back. I'm talking about on Twitter. I don't even need to respond to that because I'm, everybody knows it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it be trending. Every morning it's trending. Bust Skip up. Uh, yeah, everybody. I'll bet it is. T-shirt coming. Yeah, I need a T-shirt. So. <laughs> We're going to get the T-shirt business going. Shannon. Yes. There comes a point when you can't defend your man anymore. And I respect how fervently you love this man. You got pajamas, you got sheets, you got it all. And I, he, he is great. He is an all-time great. And I've, up until now, called him the best role model in sports. And I really respect that. I don't get these lyrics that he keeps screaming out in these videos because they're unbecoming of the best role model in sports. But that's just me. This is, this is childlike. This is, as I told you before, this is, this is what parents call acting out, except he's doing it on social media, not over in the corner. You know, he's not throwing a tantrum in front of just his parents. He's doing it in front of the world. I'm going to get you back. It's, it's so, it, it's baby-ish to me yeah. to, to have to fight back to, against people who shouldn't matter to you. I know they won. They got you. So what? So stay in the gym, work hard. You're doing what you should be doing. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. That's impressive. But you don't have to tell me. Just show me next year. Because who cares what Steph does? Who cares what Kyrie does? Just be the best player on the planet. And, and for me, it's always beautiful to watch LeBron go what you call zero dark 30. When the playoffs start, he shuts all that out. He should do it 24-7, no. 365, because no. he's... The, the best player on the planet. Who cares what Steph is posting or Stop. somebody's posting for Steph? I love, I love how you say when he's, do, he's doing these things, it's childlike. But what is mimicking someone? What, 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 hey, what, but, what, but what we're not you talking like? about Steph. No! I, don't, but don't, but Steph's oh, not I'm not LeBron. defending him. Right. Right. LeBron's the, best, the biggest guy on the block. Yeah. He's the best player on the planet. Whoa. Steph needed the best player on the planet to come join second, him, the second, best player, who second. proved that he was better than LeBron in the He's finals. He's the second best he player. He was the finals MVP. And if LeBron you know? was on the Warriors, they did the same thing to the Cavaliers mm -hmm. had Kevin Durant and Kyrie been on the Cavs. Wait, would Kevin have been on the... Cavaliers, then? How, how no, he would have been on Golden State, too. Oh, okay. right. well, then, no, yeah, okay. I said, if, if, you, if, you flip, if you flip LeBron and KD, mm -hmm. do you think the outcome would have been any different? Yeah. Rob, you can't. Rob can't. Even Rob. Even Rob, a devout LeBron hater. I'm not LeBron. He's a hater. Skip I'm not Bayless. a LeBron hater. I don't hate any players. I like them He's all. He's a reporter. Like I'm a reporter. Thank you, You George. know what? I'm going to get Rick Barry for you. I'm, I'm done doing all this. I'm going to get Rick Barry. Rick Barry to deal with you. I love Rick Barry. <laughs> I love it. I love, I love that interview. But y'all need to stop hating. Skip. I'm Hold not on. hating. 20 I'm, years I'm, ago, I'm you were trying to on... give some advice here. He's better than this. He's above it to the point that I'm fearing for him because 
That laugh, that was, we went from egomania to just maniacal. Yeah. What's that laugh yeah, about? Yeah, he's crazy. Has he lost it? I'm crazy. No, seriously. When I average Is 30 he in need of MVP? a little counseling? 20 years, a little counseling. 20 years ago, Skip Bayless wouldn't have been on social media. 20 years ago, Rob Parker wouldn't have been on social media because there was no social okay. media. So stop saying what somebody will. You never know what a person will or won't do until they actually do it. You know what, what the that? greatest player ever always did? Michael Jeffrey Just, Jordan. If anybody delivered the slightest little slide, he would actually read something into it. He would just go torch him. Oh, why? Torture. Watch him. Why did he care what somebody said about him? Because he needed the motivation. Okay, LeBron looking. needs the motivation. Okay, do it next year. He gonna do it. He's gonna play every game for 45 minutes a game. What you, got, hold on, Skip, what you mean? He'll play the most minutes in the league next what year. You he mean, always does. What you mean do it next year? Yeah. He's been doing the same thing for 14 years. <laughs> oh, why really? would he stop? He's lost five finals. It, he might lose six or seven, but he's going right. to win some more, too. The best, the best, though, of all is that 140 players left him off the all-star ballot. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I Enough say it. All the time, of LeBron respect. cannot be a villain. It is not his role. He does not like it. He doesn't no. like he it. He doesn't like it. He can't He can't it. understand why do people hate me when I've given them no reason. I'm married. I'm people the father hate three. everybody no, for they no don't. reason. No, they don't. No, they don't. Yes, everybody, they do. Everybody's not going to like you. What did I just tell you? You know that what my I'm, mother said is true. Everyone will not like you, and it's okay. I ain't talking about them. Shannon, this is why Kyrie wants out. Yes. This I want it. Kyrie to get out. It's just mm. always drama. It's like, yeah. it's like and go to the Knicks girls. and win 25 games of the year like he did in Cleveland. LeBron did retweet a nice thing about Jason, though, this weekend. So. Did he? Did he? Nice. Well, Akron. Uh -oh. Oh. Yeah. oh, yeah. He the king of Akron. <laughs> no mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One. Of one. Of one. Of one.